Welcome back to Beauty Boss Millionaire. I'm your host, Felicia Fricasi. And the objective of this episode is really just to help leaders understand the skills that are needed to effectively run a business and also the skills that you should be developing along the way of your leadership journey to run your company. Welcome back to the Beauty Boss Millionaire podcast with daily on-the-go episodes packed with testimonies and business tips to help you create financial freedom through entrepreneurship. Hosted by the owner of Fercasi Lashes and the Blow Dry Lounge, the Beauty Boss Millionaire herself, Felicia Fercasi. One of the major skills that are needed to run a business as you begin to grow is motivation. Motivation is so awesome. You have the ability to motivate just by your words, just like you have the ability to tear down by your words. So my approach is a little different than most, and most leaders have the same vision as I when I try to motivate. Sometimes you can talk about the problem, 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 which can just breathe negative energy in. But I like to motivate by focusing on the solution, the solution, the solution. Even in my relationships, in the even with my children, when I kind of talk to them, I focus on the solution. And I feel like it's more effective than the focusing on the negative and the problem because the problem (laughs) is simply that it's the problem and you have the ability to motivate those around you simply by just giving them a goal motivation is simply this the general desire or willingness of someone to do something and to motivate someone is to stimulate someone's interest or enthusiasm to do something i'm going to motivate my kids to study you know, or I'm going to motivate my team to reach the goal. So motivation is really important to have. It's like a magical wand that you can get and it gives people the energy to want to do it all over again or try even harder this time around. And that comes via meetings, conversations, targets, goals, and just encouraging words to keep them going. The next thing on my list is active listening. As a leader, you have to be able to listen and you have to be able to active listen. Active listening is this. Being able to concentrate on what is being said rather than just passively hearing the message of the speaker. Active listening involves listening with all senses. That means your full attention and focus is on what they're saying, not just in one ear and out the other. Because people notice when you do that. They know. They know when you're doing it. And it is considered rude, especially when it's something very important that your team member brings up to you or your partner or whoever, even the customer. Emotionally intelligent leaders are aware of their own emotions and intuitively aware of their emotions of others. Through their empathy, emotionally intelligent leaders factor in emotions when presenting information, making assessments and assignments, and just engaging people. They just want to be in tune. They're basically in tune. Now, if you don't have this, you can learn it. I feel like I was kind of born with it because in my household, I had to figure out what was the vibe of the the household before I even asked for anything. I had to make sure people were in good moods, bad moods. What's their emotions like today versus tomorrow? For example, if you know something is not right at work or something doesn't feel right, it might not be the best time to present something. You might want to just think about how you can present it in a better way or wait to things, clear one thing first before we move on to the other. And some people really lack emotional intelligence. You can improve your emotional intelligence by simply observe how you react to people. Look at your work environment and do a self-evaluation. Examine how you react to stressful situations. What do you do? Do you go in panic mode? Do you get angry? Do you just quit? Do you shut down? And do take responsibility for your actions. And also lastly, examine how your actions as a leader will affect others before you even take those actions. I constantly battle with this. I always think if I make this decision, how is this going to affect my team? The next skill set that I think most people understand because we all went to school probably or most of us were in some situation where we had to learn this is simply teamwork. Teamwork is simple. It's the ability to be able to work with others and allowing them to have some victories and you have some victories and everyone work together and everyone wins because of their input on the project. And the same thing when you have a team, when you're running a business, everyone wins. There may be the person uh, that's handling the behind the scenes person, but they're just as important as the person that's out in the front. Remember that the person that's in the back that no one sees that's handling all the stuff is just as important as the person that's in the front, the face of the business. So all these factors of teamwork must be evaluated. And the person that's even the person, even the janitor is to be respected because it all, it requires all hands on deck and all teamwork to be able to effectively run an operation. This last one is big because I feel like leaders need to have the skill 
interpersonal communication. Interpersonal communication are the tools that we use to interact and communicate with individuals in an organized environment. Now there's lists that you can find on the internet of things that help, but here are nine of them. Verbal communication, nonverbal communication, listening skills, negotiating, problem solving, decision making, assertiveness, patience, and empathy. So it's really good to have these interpersonal skills when you're running a business. There's literally times where I can read what people are trying to tell me, but they didn't tell me. That's that nonverbal communication that I really got really good at running a business. Negotiating is another one. You're going to have to negotiate and don't be quick to just give in, especially when people want discounts. Sometimes you're going to have to take that L and give a little discount, but you have to still make sure it makes sense. And there's some times where you can't really give a discount and definitely be assertive. Stick up for yourself. Please, if you're one of those people that don't really like to stick up for yourself, you're going to have to start to. Even if it makes you feel uncomfortable, just do it because you're going to kick yourself later on. Why didn't I say something? All right. Those are the five things I wanted to just cover today on things that are needed to be a leader and to run a business effectively. I hope all of this has helped. We're going to go over some more stuff on tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in to the Beauty Boss Millionaire with Felicia Fricasi. That's it for today. Tune in tomorrow for the Beauty Boss Millionaire podcast. And don't forget to follow the Beauty Boss Millionaire, Felicia Fricasi, on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Beauty Boss Millionaire.